This is my Razer Deathstalker Chroma. It's a full-sized keyboard that's no longer available on the market and features chiclet style switches. These actuate, reset, and bottom out at 2mm, meaning there's absolutely no dead zone after the actuation, ultimately tailoring it directly toward competitive FPS players that want to immediately stop moving on release. This meanwhile is a relatively new Razer Huntsman, and thus you can still buy it. It's a full-size keyboard that features their purple and tactile optical switches. Now they do still have mechanical components, and in a blind test you might struggle to tell the difference between both these and a standard Cherry, i.e. you still push down the key to actuate, whereby a stem moves within a shaft and then a spring pushes it back up, and in this case with a bump along the way. The important distinction here though is how that input is both transmitted and received, which all happens underneath. In this optical switch it's achieved via a horizontal infrared beam as opposed to a metal contact point, therefore removing the need of debouncing and additionally reducing the risk of degradation and potential double key presses over time. These also have the capability of responding much faster as well, though in a way it'll always be limited by the polling rate. These purple switches actuate and reset at 1.5mm compared to a traditional Cherries 2, whilst bottoming out at 35 as opposed to 4 A metal stabiliser on each key is certainly a welcome addition as well, as it helps reduce chatter and keeps that key steady on its way down. Finally, this is their brand new Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition, a TKL variant that simultaneously introduces their red and now linear optical switch. These reduce actuation and reset yet again to an incredibly fast 1mm, whilst retaining the 3.5mm key depth of the purple variant. Now many of you watching probably think the difference between linear and tactile is purely personal preference, and in fact many of you might even take the time to argue about it in the comment section below I'm sure. However, I'm here to tell you that you're categorically wrong. Linear is the absolute best for FPS games, period. This right here is a short clip of me trying to do the smallest movement that I can possibly make in quick live whilst using the tactile switch. And this is me trying to do the same thing again on this new red linear variant. Now a couple things to note, firstly this test essentially represents best case in that we're barely going past the actuation point 30 times, whilst the majority of competitive FPS players will pretty much exclusively bottom out their switches whilst moving in game. Now obviously you can count a strafe or crouch to make it easier on both, but if we're honest there's no denying which one has the edge for FPS. Now the reason I included the Death Stalker at the beginning of this video is because technically, according to the numbers, it's superior to both. However, it's really inconsistent to make a small adjustment, and even though you can technically make the smallest adjustment with it, more often than not you end up overshooting a significant amount. So with that said, my weapon of choice moving forward is that Huntsman Tournament Edition with red and linear optical switches. First, I must say that I absolutely love the aesthetics of this keyboard, and I'm quite jealous of Viper users that can already pair it with a mouse, and that's whilst I anxiously wait for a new version of the Death Adder. Dimensions are up on the screen now, but the important feature here are those two feet at the back, additionally offering 6 or 9 degrees of tilt, and ensuring you'll have no problem with clearance for the most sensible monitor stands, and that means if you prefer to rotate your keyboard at an angle, you're covered there. Its smaller form factor also means no matter where you're at, be that at home or an event, space should never be an issue. That said, it is taking my brain a little while to adjust to the fact there is no number pad there, and I'm still moving my keyboard to the left every time I die in game. My favourite feature of this board though, beside those switches, are the raised keys and their respective double shot PVT keycaps. It essentially makes cleaning an absolute breeze. That and the fact it's 1.8 meter USB Type C cable is removable is definitely a nice touch too. Now it does have a propriety connector to keep it steady, but Razer have left ample space that you could use any other cable in its place if wanted, such as this IKEA one. Sunups 3.0 returns, but it does look to support onboard profiles, and you can obviously cycle through a bunch of lighting options, additionally synchronizing them to your other Razer peripherals. Generally though, there's nothing here to complain about, especially in terms of functionality, and it also offers a second layer of keys through Razer's Hypershift feature. So final thoughts? Well if you don't mind the noise, considering it is quite a loud keyboard, and you don't fat finger your keys considering the ridiculously light, which by the way might take some getting used to, then the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition is a brilliant keyboard with very little to complain about, and one that should probably be on your Christmas list this year. With that said, your mouse and its ergonomics, weight and sensor, 
Your monitor in its refresh rate, pixel response times and signal processes in the delay. Your graphics card and processor's FPS output, and even your own capability and the limits of human dexterity will always have the most impact on your ability to hit things in game. A keyboard in that respect should always be the least of your worries, but I mean that in the sense that it should at least be good enough to avoid holding you back, i.e. not actively work against you. Here, Razer have taken what is effectively a traditional mechanical switch and then improved upon it. And the Tournament Edition is certainly one of the few keyboards out there that has genuinely made improvements for competitive players. Is this the best keyboard on the market? Well, that's really hard to say. And will it make you a better player? Probably not. But what I will state is that in an era of optical switches, why would you even consider buying one that doesn't feature them? And is technically inferior. So with that said, I'm more than happy to recommend it. And the only thing I'd do differently in a version two would be to introduce the circular volume dial found on the Huntsman Elite. And this is because I still value the ability to quickly change volume in a clutch situation though it is still possible to do through function keys and some repetition. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks to the UK Razor team for sending this out. And if you have any questions or comments, then make sure you do let me know down below and I'll get back to you. Subscribe, of course, for more in future. But for now, take care, keep gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.